genetically modified goats? Oh, the tangled webs we weave. But out of goat's milk? What we think we can do is actually start custom designing genes. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Welcome to Secrets of the Sequence. I'm Lucky Severson. Here's an old mother goose rhyme, slightly goosed. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating goat milk curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and said, My web silk's in that milk, I say. A spider web in goat milk, even before it comes out of the goat? It may sound like a 1950s B-grade science fiction movie, but it's real. In this new era of transgenic science, Spider-Man is out and the spider goat is in. Nestled in the countryside outside of Montreal, Canada, there's a goat farm unlike any other. On the outside, the goats look perfectly normal. They run, they play, they munch on hay. But on the inside, the goats harbor an unusual secret. They have been genetically modified with the spider's gene. The result, an animal that is almost all goat, but an eatsy weetsy bit spider. Nexia Technologies, the company that owns this farm, combined the spider and the goat genes in hopes they would eventually be able to produce large quantities of spider silk without having to bother with spiders. What they have accomplished is called biomimicry, that is, creating an animal that has traits similar to those of another species. Who came up with this bizarre concept, and more important, why? The story begins 3,000 miles away, out in Wyoming, where a scientist collects spiders for use in genetic research. He is known as Spider-Man to his colleagues. Professor Randy Lewis has spent 20 years unraveling the secrets of the spider. Spiders in 450 million years they've evolved have been able to create a protein that has the very impressive mechanical properties that spider silk has. You have sort of Legos that hold everything together, and you have slinkies that allow for elasticity, and the two are combined. And so that's why you can have a single protein that gives you strength and elasticity. There are at least 36,000 species okay. of spiders in the world, and they all produce silk in glands located in their abdomens. When the fluid is excreted, it passes through spinnerets and comes out the spider as silk threads. One spider species called the orb weaver is known for its strong elastic webs. So far, Dr. Lewis has sequenced four out of its six silk protein genes, each responsible for a different kind of thread, used by the spider for everything from spinning a web to catching prey. In Spider-Man's spider lab, they carefully choose which gland produces which type of silk before pulling the gossamer strand out of the spider. Then each type of silk is tested for its strength, elasticity, and even stickiness. The analogy we use is that it's like pulling out floss. In as little as a tenth of a second, it can get, gets converted from a liquid to a solid fiber that basically, from then on, is uh, almost indestructible. Then the silk is stretched on a machine to test how long it will take before it breaks. One of the silks the orb weaver uses, known as drag line, serves as the structure of the web or as a safety rope in case the spider falls. It's considered the strongest silk in the world, able to absorb tremendous amounts of energy before breaking. We estimate that you could stop a jet on an aircraft carrier with a piece of drag line silk that was one inch in diameter. Draglang silk could be very valuable, but it is very difficult to produce. The problem is not the lack of spiders, it's the lack of spider farms. Spiders are number one very territorial and number two cannibalistic. So they need a certain amount of space in order to be able to you know, catch the amount of prey they need to live. 
So what happens is, is that if they're if they're in a less area than that, either two spiders will fight and one will kill, or, or what ha frequently happens, they end up killing each other. So instead of collecting silt from spiders, Dr. Lewis came up with another way, and that takes us back to the goat farm in Canada. Five years ago, Dr. Lewis teamed up with the Nexia Company near Montreal. They run the Spider Goat Ranch. Together, they splice dragline silk genes into the genomes of goats, and it seems to have worked. Analysis has shown that 5 to 10 percent of the offspring carry the gene that produces spider web silk. There is silk in that milk, the result of one spider gene spliced into the goat's 70,000 or so genes. Nexia, with an eye to marketing, named the resulting goat milk silk Biosteel. We engineer, genetically engineer these genes, so when the animal lactates, when it produces milk, then the spider silk product is found in the milk. The company doesn't spin the milk per se. The spider's silk protein in the milk is distilled out, purified, and then spun through fine tubes into thread-like fibers. If you were able to spin that one gram of uh, the purified spider silk out of the milk, and if you were to stretch that to a fiber that has the fineness of a human hair, you'll make a filament that is at least nine kilometers long. So if you translate that to how much you can make out of on a gram, there are several uh, hundred kilometers out of one goat per year. That's a lot of silk from one goat. Nexia estimates that a herd of 100 goats should produce enough silk to meet the world's demand for fine medical sutures. The goat milk silk doesn't have quite the same tenacity as natural spider silk, but Nexia claims it will work just fine for the sutures and other uses. Artificial ligaments, fishing line, even bulletproof vests. The standard vest is a combination of heavy ceramic plates and tough fiber. Using the biosteel silk could result in a vest that would withstand the impact of a bullet and yet be made only of the spider goat fibers. We want to replace this uh, with some more biosteel fibers and because silk has the ability to absorb energy and it's strong material at the same time being lightweight. Using spider goat silk to make bulletproof vest is just the beginning. What we think we can do is actually start custom designing genes. We think that we can in fact create genes to produce proteins that have a defined set of elasticity and a defined tensile strength. And what do the goats think of their genetically engineered future? It's hard for me to imagine that there's any difference in a goat with or without the transgene in it. Their behaviors are exactly the same, they're producing milk the same, they produce an extra protein in the milk. From the perspective of the goat, I would argue they probably are the best, you know, the happiest and best taken care of goats in the entire face of the earth. Nexia hopes to obtain approval from the Food and Drug Administration to get its goat milk silk surgical sutures thank the writers for that one, the sutures to market within two years. If they succeed, they will be the first to market a genetically altered product from a farm animal that is not a drug or a food. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.